Hi, this is Dr. Arguzlu. I am a sleep doctor from Northern California, San Francisco area. Um, today, we are going to talk about the effect of cannabis on sleep. As we know, in the last several years, there was a bunch of social changes in America that has um, caused a lot more use of cannabis in the society due to medicinal use or recreational use. Many states have um, legalized marijuana to decrease the cost of prosecution, to push on progressive justice, or sometimes even to increase their tax base, or all of above. The net effect has been significantly increased use of cannabis and also use of cannabis in inappropriate settings, like driving or in businesses. We have seen a lot of patients to come and say, I use cannabis or weed to sleep. And that gave me a motivation to um, discuss what we know about the effect of cannabis on sleep or sleep and cannabis together and what we don't know. In the last many years, um, cannabis has been scheduled in category of poisons, schedule one. So it has been very hard to study cannabis because for a facility to be able to study cannabis, they have to have a lot of safeguard that is normally not available in regular research labs. So the researchers have chosen to study something else because they need a lot of safeguards to be able to study cannabis. The research is a scarce on cannabis, but there is research. So the first thing that is very well known is cannabis affects the sleep. For instance, anybody who used cannabis for a while knows that if they try to stop cannabis, their sleep becomes horrible. That is not a, a piece of data that we can say cannabis helps us sleep. That's because of the changes that it causes. And when it goes away, the changes have to go back and that causes insomnia and sometimes anxiety palpitation. But this is an evidence that cannabis affects the sleep. Another evidence that we know is prenatal use of cannabis. That means if a baby is inside her mom's tummy and mom is using cannabis, will affect the sleep long-term and for a lifetime with problems with initiation of a sleep and maintenance of a sleep that goes forever. Again, the cause and effect has not been studied, but association is known. Um, we know that if we use low-dose cannabis, especially the THC, the sleep on that first, second, or maybe third day will become a little bit better, subjectively. However, from fourth day and forever, for long term, the sleep will stay this organ has less of REM sleep, which is the dream sleep, and also have less total sleep time. So all of these three um, indicators are very major and most important indicators of how good the sleep is. So we know these people sleep poor. Also, if we go and ask people who use cannabis, do you have a sleep problem? More than half of them say yes. And at this point, the amount of data that we have and the research that we have does not tell us if that cannabis has caused the sleep problem or they had the sleep problem and end up using cannabis. But this is what we know. If you think use of weed will help you sleep, you're going to use more weed and you're going to use it more frequently. 
And that's a wrong belief. So you better change your beliefs. Particularly, the problem is worse in adolescence because we know that in this time, the brain network is connecting and the brain is developing. And the cannabis will cause changes in development of brain and impairs that. So that is associated also with lifetime problems, including one of the most important things is less achievement in lifetime. And uh, again, there is case to reason to avoid cannabis altogether in teenagers. Also, we know that the teenagers who use cannabis has altered the sleep patterns later in the life, years later, and they sleep more on the weekend. That's one of the things that we found. Interestingly, it has been seen that when cannabis is used as a medicine in clinical population, not a healthy population or not a general population, in clinical population, when they have something wrong with them and the doctor felt that cannabis is right for this person, um, there is evidence of benefit. However, we cannot take that on face value. As we always know, the devil is in the details and there are a lot of details that is not known to us at this point. And interestingly, just very recently, FDA recommended that the cannabis be a scheduled as a scheduled three drugs. So the research uh, will be a lot easier into the different effects of cannabis, including in the sleep. And we expect to know more in future, but this is the current state of research and our knowledge. So I live in California. In California, cannabis is, has been um, released to general population for recreational use. I always tell my patients that just because it became legal, nothing changed about cannabis. It still has some bad effects. I am more worried for the kids and young adults who use cannabis than if somebody with 65 year old with cancer pain is using cannabis, obviously. Um, I tell people, well, this is something that is available to you. And if you feel very highly that it helps you, you can try, but you have to have an open mind about the known problems that is associated with it, most particularly in younger population. So for a sleep and particularly for younger population, I do not recommend use of cannabis. I do not remember ever I have recommended it for a sleep reasons. And I do remember a few times I had recommended it for other reasons in the older population. So please take this availability with a grain of salt and don't do something that later on maybe you regret or you cannot even know that you are regretting because Nobody knows what it did to you. Um, in general, most of the data is negative on use of cannabis for sleep and in a sleep, unless more research comes for clinical population and in a specific cases in future. So I really appreciate that you stayed with me through this um, video and I hope it was helpful. And I see you next week. Soon we are going to start our series on dreams and sleep. And I hope you are excited about that. Thanks.